Welcome to my garage once again. We're here to make some art, this time some pinwheels. But not these little rinky dink pinwheels. I'm talking about some serious pinwheels. Like this guy. Huh. Look at my giant pinwheel. I made four of those pinwheels that were on public display on the Atlanta Beltline for about three years. Uh, one of those years they were completely covered in crocheted and knitted yarn and then a year later they were installed again this time spray painted by people in the public who just came by to help me with my art. Uh, I'm going to show you how we make these things. Stay tuned. Now the process is exactly the same as making a paper pinwheel. You start with a square, you cut the corners, fold them in, and that's all it takes to make a pinwheel. But we're gonna do ours out of metal. We're using a bicycle hub and a piece of sheet metal, a bunch of rivets, and that's it. I'll show you how. So we're gonna start with a bicycle wheel. Any bicycle wheel will do. We need just the hub. We don't need the rest of it. So get your bicycle wheel, get some big pliers, cut all the spokes off. It can be the hub from the front of a bike, the back of a bike, doesn't really matter. Uh, a hub with a larger diameter flange uh, is probably better, but something like this will work. Bicycle wheels come in different number of holes or spoke holes. The most common is 32, so you're going to see 16 holes per side. Uh, this one, I believe, is 24, so it's got 12 holes each side. Uh, doesn't really matter. I like the 12 here, it's really nicely spaced around. This is going to be the center of our wheel, of our pinwheel. We start with a two foot square sheet metal. Well, whatever size, this one happens to be two foot. We just need a square. We're not gonna make one of the big ones today. We're gonna do one that's about half that size. Mark the center. I drew a diagonal all the way across, diagonal across, mark the center. And then we need to drill out a hole. We want that hole, that sheet metal to fit right over this so we just I found a hole saw that fit just right to this hub like that where it's not going to cut on into the spoke holes because we want metal over those spoke holes just like that I cut a hole like this now I can take my hub put it right through I then marked from the other side I took a pen and I marked all those individual holes Drill those out. Now we've got holes matching each spoke hole. Eventually we're gonna attach this on, we're gonna rivet it right to place. On the diagonal line, cut in from the corner, probably about two thirds of the way. Now you'll notice I drilled a little hole right here. Same spot right here, same spot right here. We're gonna use those when we fold these in to the middle, instead of attaching it back to the hub, we're just going to attach them to themselves, and I'll show you in a bit, but that's what those holes are for. So, get some good heavy snips, and just start cutting. Be very careful. These edges are extremely sharp. You're going to cut yourself. Maybe use some gloves. Again, I'm cutting each one in two-thirds or three-quarters of the way to the middle. You got it all cut out. Essentially what we're going to do is we're going to fold over each corner, like this. And we're just going to put a little bolt right through the middle. Because of these sharp corners here, I'm just going to cut them off so they don't get my fingers. We've got the basic pinwheel shape. Now we got to attach our hub. We can either put it like this, or put it from the other side, like this. 
This is how I prefer to mount it. Now the spoke holes, or these holes were made uh, for an eighth of an inch rivet. If you don't know how to fasten things with rivets, it's so easy to do. Uh, I'm sure there's plenty of videos online. It makes stuff like this really easy. All you need is a cheap little rivet tool. They work great. So these holes will fit my rivets, but my spoke holes don't. So I need to drill my spoke holes a little bigger. Now, we can just start riveting this up, but if this is going to be outside for a long period of time, the weather and the wind and the gusts are really going to wear on these little holes. It might not be enough to hold this thing together. On the big pinwheels, what I did to help that is I added an extra large thick plate of aluminum right here to stabilize and reinforce that middle part. I then just drilled the holes further through, used bigger rivets, and then I riveted that plate in leather spots. But I also used a little bit of epoxy between this aluminum, the other aluminum, and the hub. For this one, I'm not going to bother adding an extra plate. This is a much smaller pinwheel. I'm going to see how it does. I think it's going to work well. But I am going to go ahead and add a little epoxy. We're going to just use some JB Weld. I'll mix it right up, put it on there. So I'm only squeezing the rivet about halfway, just enough to kind of get to start to clamp. But it's not all the way tight yet. That way there's a little more play and I can get these others in. Now we'll start tartaning them the rest of the way. All right, we've got all the rivets on, as you can see. You might even be able to see it from inside. That's it. Now we just gotta bolt this onto something. Because it's a bicycle hub. The easiest thing to do is use a quick release. But I'm gonna use this old rusty pole that I have. That's it. Now, of course, you can paint it or leave it bare, whatever you want. It's yours to do whatever you want with it. Thanks for watching.